And we made it. Hi, everyone. I am Seth Rudetsky. I'm James Wesley. Welcome to Stars in the House. This is our new, we're trying this position for today, out just for lighting. Literally each day we've had a new position of doing this. So um, we are trying, Seth is sending Dr. LaPook the link so he can be in the house. Yes, um, queen. Backstage is what they call it on StreamYard. Anyway, welcome to Stars in the House while Seth's giving uh, Dr. LaPook the link. Um, it is our now twice daily chat series it's for the actors Music fund yes the chat actors fund. actors fund.org and yeah. it's a misnomer the actors fund is not just for actors it's for anybody in show business so actors singers any musicians. professional in the entertainment industry and that is across the country across the regional theater box office people tv script supervisors words i don't know symphonies Sorry. ballets yeah. operas key grips best opera. boys professions i don't know what they mean but i always see them on the credit scroll anybody and people go to the actors fund for help for paying their rent for paying medical bills for just understanding unemployment, for our mental health. Actors Fund is amazing. They need right. more money than ever because basically nobody is working. First of all, no one in performing arts works in the first place, basically. But on top of that, no one really is working. And the way the Actors Fund makes money, everything's been canceled. Their biggest fundraiser of the year, honoring Matthew Broderick, Sarah Jessica Parker, canceled. Ragtime is sold out. It's supposed to happen in two weeks. I don't see how that's gonna be possible. They were gonna raise so much money, that's canceled. So they need money more than ever, yet people are, and they, they need more money than ever, but they're getting even less money being brought in. What's happening regionally? Can we talk about that? Well, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to say a few, because here's the bright spot. If these are the donations actually that came in at the end of the afternoon show, speaking of reunions, the Beetlejuice reunion. So I wanted to give a shout out to these people and then I'll go into our grand total as of last night. And that is, I'm gonna name a few names here. Stephanie from Florida gave $50. Sophia from Texas, $40. Jay from Illinois, $75. Wow. Ryan from Washington, $25. Amanda from South Carolina, $25. Andrew from Florida, $50. Brian from Massachusetts gave $100. Alex from Illinois, $25. And Judy from Oklahoma, $150. And that leads to a grand total, this is actually a, as of last night, $111,250 <laughs> to the Actors Fund that we've raised since uh, with everyone's help that's watching and the performers. Yeah, tomorrow's um, our official two week anniversary. Right. And as you see, the donations are like 30, like literally from $5 right. to like 100. The average today is 40. We don't have any corporate sponsorship. It's just amazingly generous people calling these donations, well, whatever the hell it's called, <laughs> emailing. The point is making these donations over $100,000. Um, okay, what else do we have to talk about? Well, I wanted to talk about, speaking of uh, one of those donations was from Texas. I wanted to give a shout out, that's right, to my friends in Dallas. So uh, going back a little bit, after 9-11, I really thought, oh, what's the point of the arts? I was gonna go into the medical field. I had moved to New York to pursue acting, I'd moved from LA and I'd lived here for a couple of years and 9-11 happened. And I thought, what the hell am I doing? Arts aren't important and all that nonsense, right? Um, so I moved to Texas and when I was in Dallas, I went to this theater called Uptown Players and they had a performer, they had a production of Kiss of the Spider Woman, which I had seen six times with Cheetah Rivera that he played on Broadway. Yes, I did. Um, yes, like that. So how, I had, how, how, uh, so amazing. I remembered how transformative theater is and it didn't have to be on Broadway. It could be anywhere in any theater. In and P.S. I was talking to Miranda Sings, aka Colleen, Colleen Ballinger. Right. She finally made a Broadway debut in Waitress and it's the answer I get from everyone. I said, mm -hmm. I said, did you feel different being on Broadway than just doing a high school show? And she basically was like, no. It's the, theater is the same all over the country. Of course, it's cool to be on Broadway and you're like, I'm on Broadway and you have an expensive costume, but it's the same thing as doing high school theater, community theater, regional theater. Theater is all the same across the country. So it was that production of Kiss of the Spider Woman that I saw at Uptown Players in Dallas. It was like, oh, I need to go back to this. This is who I am. And then I saw The Life, which of course later on would become, or I'd become friends with Lily's wife because of this one. And um, and then I ended up doing um, uh, Andrew Lippa's Wild Party, which was the first show I had done in a number of years. And was like, oh, this is what I was meant to do. And um, so they they wrote me, they did Disaster um, last year they at did this my time, show. right? They did an amazing production of my They did show. an amazing They're production. great theater. And so they, they uh, Jeff uh, Rain and uh, Craig Lynch, who are gonna join us later this week because they're gonna talk about the impact that this is having all across the country, as we all know. Um, but <laughs> Jeff sent me, I don't know if Seth, if you wanna play it, I, but uh, they sent me this video of, of me doing the show, but they also wanted to talk about Fun Home because Fun Home was actually their show that they were going to start rehearsals in like 
like when this all happened. They were gonna and, start it on like the 13th. Right, so exactly. right, right when rehearsals were about to begin for Fun Home. Yeah, they were supposed to start rehearsals in March. March. Let me put on my glasses. They were gonna start rehearsals March 16th. They'd already done a photo shoot. And then on March, and they were on March 12th, they were loading the sets and the lights <sighs> in. And then on March 13th is when the city of Dallas, you know, announced that they basically couldn't do so, it. So it's not just Broadway that shut down. Exactly. Theater is, I mean, TV, film, theater, everything is shut down around the country. So when Jeff comes on, we're going to show a video from James from yesteryear when he comes on. But, but, but let's, before we go into the fun home, why don't we show oh, like yeah. their production photo? This was going to happen. This is because um, I know the whole cast there is, is watching in Dallas. So, so they actually um, did shout out. It's going to happen. But oh, uh, so this this uh, today's show is because I'm so I'm friends with all of them is in dedication to you guys and to other productions all over the country that have been postponed. And this show is a fun home reunion. That's right. So I'm getting so, so many. Go. Yeah. So many emails from people that are obsessed with this show. So I can't wait to bring this cast on. Is there anything else I want to talk about? I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. OK. So as you're watching, if you can, you can see a little stream. You can donate at. That's right. Oh, that's the one thing. Oh. Okay. Listen, we just started oh, right. new social media. We have this like amazing team working for free. Spotco. Spotco. The amazing like Shout out to them. Broadway like merchant. I mean, incredible. But can you please follow us? Two things. Can you please copy and paste right. the link Share for this it. video? That's right. Share it with everyone. The more people that watch, first of all, the more people that are gonna just be in a good mood. These shows are really fun and they make you feel close. And the more people that are gonna donate. Right. So please copy and paste this link in all of like your Facebook, your Twitter, and go, oh my God, watch this right now. It's amazing. Second of all, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter. It's so old school. We're literally at stars in the house. Why is that old school? Well, because it has an at sign. That's not old school. That's new school. Correct. So anyway, we're on Instagram, Facebook. We are everywhere. If you follow us, you'll see all the videos, photos, behind the scenes shenanigans, right. and you'll help get our views up. It's literally all about views. I'm telling you, we get letters from all over the world. And there are actually a, quite a few letters and for the sake of time. We'll read another uh, a day, but yeah, from we got Brazil, a, there was one who's someone who's watching it there. I mean, they're, it's we got kind some, of incredible. We got one from um, these guys who clean airplanes saying that they're basically losing their jobs yeah. and watching the show gives them hope. I mean, it, it's so nice. So I saw that photo, that amazing photo of the of the nurses watching yeah, it. Yeah, it's right there. Which one so, is it? Right here. Oh, this is, is it, is it, I think it's two doctors or two nurses okay. watching. This is them on a break. Bottom line is two people on the front lines here in New York City. And a mental break on our lunch break. And it was I, I sobbed when I saw that. I mean, it's 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 it goes to the power of why this cast is here and the power of theater and music. So, so much Seth, to that. Bring them up. Okay. So I'm first gonna bring on everybody and then I'm gonna start moving them around because we're not allowed to have so many people on stream. We can only have time. six different frames on StreamYard at a time. So, so okay, so who well don't forget, by the way, John, Dr. John LaPoop is coming later. But that's right. We have a lot of people named Allison. <laughs> so first we've got the fabulous middle Allison, Emily. Hi, Em. You're, you're, oh, I muted you for some reason. Sorry, you were passive. No, I you muted are. me. I muted Whoa. me. Okay. That's obnoxious. <laughs> okay, then we have the youngest Allison. She's just an angel. <laughs> Hi, How are you? Have, Hi, Emily. Hi, Sid. You guys packed up later. <laughs> then we have an older Allison, literally in front of a fire. Beth Malone. Hi, Beth. Hi. And then we have, um, look. Hmm. Nice. Oh, fun home cup marketing. Look, it's, it's, it's all messed up. Then we have the mom. Fun home. Whoa. Have one too. Then we have Cheers. the mother who thanks you. Don't you ever come back here. The fabulous Judy Kuhn. Hi, Judy. Hi, friends. Look, and I have, have the fun home t shirt and my fun home sweatshirt on. <laughs> and I then we have. <laughs> And then we have the dad, and for this, because we're all want to be in good moods, the dad was a wonderful happy ending in our version of Fun Home, <laughs> Michael Cerberus. Hey, everybody. Hi, Michael. I have no Fun Home swag at all. Okay, all good. okay our first segment is, go. we're going to have Judy and M. so I'm going to bring you guys all back later. So, okay. Michael, okay. Gonna come back later. Come back later. Uh, hold on. Judy and M. So, it's Judy, come back later. And Hi, guys. Hi. First of all, you broke my heart with that story about the show in Texas. But then you made me so happy to see all the, my well, dear friends' faces. Ah, oh, here's the poster again. It's going to happen. People, it's going to happen. And I mean, we're all experiencing the same heartbreak in different ways. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. 
So M, everyone wants you some insight. Every, there's so many fun home people watching. What's your favorite memory of doing the show? And I know that, I mean, in terms of, let's say, audience people approaching me and going, oh my God, because uh, of your eye. Oh, I think um, it was just really beautiful and a privilege to be able to sit with people after the show and have the show resonate after the curtain drop, even though, you know, we had no curtain really. Um, <laughs> like, and experience that with them and have people open up. And, you know, you like to think that whatever you do in life, it's going to mean something to someone, even in just a small way. And it's it's really a, a privilege to have that. I think that's one of my favorite things about being an actor is when you do it, make a connection with someone through your performance. It's a really special thing. And um, Fun Home, we, we had that every night. Do you think any actual people came out after seeing your performance? Oh yeah, we got letters and I have a couple of people who I still talk to and keep in touch with who came out to us and to their families after the show. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I came out to myself too, in a way, you know? So I think it's an important, it's an important thing for a lot of people. And this is a funny story. I'm actually wearing the t-shirt that I auditioned in, which is like, <laughs> it's like a green medium Allison shirt. <laughs> Crazy. What did you sing for your audition? I sang Changing My Major. They had us sing Changing My Major. Oh, your big song. of it. The big one. Okay, so <laughs> Judy Kuhn, um, this was no Metropolis. Let's just say that. So in terms of... <laughs> oh, why? Oh. I have to. <laughs> Okay, so just to be oh, gosh, Emily like it's it. so wrong. Just to be shallow, because I don't think Emily knows this story. Please tell Emily what happened when you went out to lunch with your friend and you were like, we're moving to Broadway and we're gonna be doing it in the round. Please tell Emily what your friend made you do. Oh my god, I can't believe I remember every story. Don't tell me anything. Never tell a story to Seth because he might then <laughs> in front of hundreds or maybe thousands of people. Correct. Live. Go on. And we're, we're going to, when the show moves, we're going to go from the proscenium to the full round. And she said, stand up. And I was like, what? She said, stand up. I, so I stood up. She said, turn around. <laughs> and I, and I, then I, I turned around and she said, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Meaning your ass is okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good friend, Judy. That's a good friend. <laughs> now, by the way, Ems, look at this. How nice this is. You want to read this, Jimmy? We saw the show the night gay marriage became legal. Our daughter had not come out yet, but she is out and proud, and we are currently quarantined with her and her girlfriend. Yeah! <laughs> well, never forget that. Oh, my God. That what was it? It was amazing. And I remember yeah. had the rainbow flag and you ran around the stage and everyone stood on their feet and cheered at the curtain call. It was, there were so many tears. It was, like, oh. it was incredible. There you go. We're going to talk about your trip down south, but just I thought you'd appreciate this one comment. Jimmy, can you read that? It is my favorite Broadway musical ever, and I've seen over 100 in New York and on tour. By the way, I live oh. in South Carolina. Oh. oh. We're gonna talk about your Southern trip. So mm -hmm. we're gonna talk all about that later, but I'm gonna go back for a second with Judy because Judy, the other story I would love you to tell, because I also think Emily will appreciate it because she hasn't, I don't think Emily's done enough morning shows to appreciate the craziness. Please tell your morning uh -huh. show story about Pocahontas when you're in full glamor. <laughs> you're really going all over the place. Right? Well, <laughs> I wanna, you know, I, my mind works, keep going. Okay, so I, um, this was when Pocahontas opened and they did this crazy um, premiere in Central Park. And mm. they did huge screens made out of um, uh, like those container, those things that they put on container ships. They were several stories high. Oh my God. Um, all, all the uh, Good Morning America was broadcasting the show from Central Park. And I was singing um, Colors of the Wind on Good Morning America. And so I got up at the crack of dawn, went, you know, spent hours, hair and makeup, sound check, the whole thing, and then we waited and waited and waited. Well, the night before the premiere, it, there had been this torrential rainstorm. And of course, everyone at Disney was freaking out because they thought, 
the whole thing might be a washout, so to speak. Anyway, but it was a beautiful day, so everyone was relieved. So they brought me into the tent, the holding tent, with my hair and makeup and all glammed up and ready to go on live TV. And um, we were with all these, you know, handlers and whoever, we were walking through the uh, door of the tent. And the person who was right in front of me brushed the side of the tent and over the door was a flap that had been collecting water in it. And when she brushed that, just as I passed through, the water went oh my No, Judy, what did you do? The hair and makeup people just like swarmed around me. They grabbed me, they <laughs> my hair dry, they patted me down, they touched up my makeup. I mean, it was insane. I just was standing, like, it was like an I love Lucy moment. It was. <laughs> Oh my God! There's always such a buildup for those things. Now, the of course, of them. now, of course, then there wasn't the the World Wide Web did not exist, and now if I, you, anybody looks at that video, which is on YouTube somewhere, you can see how my hair is slightly plastered to my head. <laughs> Do you mean this? Ah! <laughs> you look great, you were you set me up, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, she girl. She did not know. All right, so so Jude, speaking of Pocahontas, I'm sure Emily maybe wasn't even born when it came out, but I'm sure no, she no, no, I was, I was. I'm an old baby, Seth. Well, whatever you're taping with, it's working. <laughs> exactly. Um, Jude, will you do us a little songy song? I played the piano for you. I haven't even heard what it sounds I like. That. All right. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay. Here we go. As you know, I'm not particularly good at this. Here we go. Okay. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Wait, what's happening? What's happening? It's not working? Open? Hold on. Don't worry, we have time. Find it. Oh, there we go. Can you hear it? What I love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice. The water's always changing, always flowing. But people, I guess, can't think like that. They all must pay a price. To be safe, we lose our chance of ever knowing. What's around the river bend? Waiting back around the river bend. Oh, just around the river bend, beyond the shore, where the gulls fly free. Don't know what for. What I dream they might send, just around the river bend, for me, coming for me. Let it there be a wood tree to right behind the wall. And I ignore that sound of distant throwing. You handsome, sturdy husband, who built handsome, sturdy walls, and never dreams that something might be coming. Just around the river bend, just around the river bend, I look once more, just around the river bend. Beyond the shore, somewhere past the sea, don't know what for. Why do all my dreams extend just around the river bend? Just around the river bend. Should I choose the smoothest course, steady as a beating drum? Should I marry Cocoa? Is all my dreaming at hand? Or do you still wait for me, dream giver? Just around the river bend. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey. Haven't sung that one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you you still got it. Oh, so good. Couldn't really hear the track at the end, but. You still got you it, though. beautiful. Got it. Too. You still sound the same. Well, you know, while everyone's on, I'll read some donations that came on for the, the first batch for the Fun Home reunion. 
Um, and you can put up comments. Seth, and by the way, just yeah, so you know, ahead. this is like just a little smattering. These are not the only donations. They just sent us a little list of kind of like 10 people. Just so you know. So Brett from Virginia, $100. Brittany from California gave $25. Andy from Arizona, $20. Joseph from Florida, $100. Rachel from New York, $50. Jenny from Connecticut, $103. And from Oregon, Oregon, $25. And Allison from Massachusetts just gave $500 to the Actors Fund. Thank you all. Oh, thank you. Of course. Almost every state, the only, you know, and by the way, the minimum donation is $5. Feel so free to donate five, but I'd love That's to right. hear, I hear a lot of New York. I'd love to hear, we haven't heard of Kansas yet. Oh. We haven't heard any Dakotas. Any West Virginia? Um, Minnesota is Minnesota state. Yes, Minnesota is the state. Never heard of Minnesota. I can't remember if it's a city. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm the piano. Um, okay, we're gonna bring on the doctor, the great Dr. LaPook. Judy, warm it down. You didn't see the big fat, did you? Everyone, stand by. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. How do I do this? Sage. So that's gonna to take a while because he has to do it one at yeah. a time. So, Michael, you'll be back. I'm out. Beth, you'll be back. I love the fireplace. Yeah, me too. Oh my gosh. Um, who's back. left? Judy Kuhn, you'll be back. Judy Kuhn, and then you have to. Drop below. Sydney, look adorable. You'll be back. <laughs> and here we are. Bye, Emily. Peace out. You'll be back. And now the chief medical correspondent for CBS News. Who was Dr. just on this morning at CBS and was yeah. amazing. CBS Sunday right morning. at the beginning. CBS Dr. Sunday morning. John LaPook. Hi, Dr. John LaPook. Um, I'm gussied up because I just did a, um, a Zoom interview with a guy, a doctor who they just yesterday did the first uh, transfusion into two critically ill patients with COVID of serum taken from people who had recovered. And he's waiting with bated breath and fingers crossed to see wow. if it's different. It's happening folks. And he said, there's, there's a long line of people who want to donate. So oh. people are amazing. I have an actual question if you want to ask, but you can, well, finish what you want to talk about. Cause I have to ask this question. Here's what I want to talk about. Um, first of all, I am going to watch um, the, the, the Facebook video uh, on how to cut your own hair. Because it's really get, getting there. Um, My daughter Julie did that. Well, yeah, Julie has a video. Um, we'll I want, a I want, tomorrow morning. I'm going to embarrass you for two seconds and talk about the two of you. First of all, James, this is what I was meant to do. What a, what a thing to be able to say when you said that earlier, when you discovered that this is for you. That's what everybody wants, right? You just want your kid, your your kid, just to, to say that. So incredible. But the two of you, we talk about the psychological importance of what you're doing. And people need to have structure in their day, and they need to have something to look forward to. And there it is, two o'clock, eight o'clock, two o'clock. <laughs> Your amazing laugh is the best medicine I have ever seen, James. <laughs> and and Seth, your sassafras, to, to use your word, <laughs> your razzmatazz, hot jazz, all the things that Vaudeville has. Um, it's it's just great, I, and it picks up my own spirits. My days are filled right now with. There's not six minutes without some communication from somebody in some form. I'm waiting for the carrier pigeon to come in. <laughs> but right. it's, you know, text, email, phone, you name it. So anyway, for me too, this is great. And anyway, I just hats off to you guys for, for doing this. Uh, I Thank actually you. really appreciate you saying that because we're always like, it's just nice to know that people do think about two o'clock and eight o'clock because we don't see the audience. So it's just nice to know that. Anyway, that cheers me up. Thank you. Well, so I also know that it takes a lot of work for you because I get the link to this. Oh, 10 seconds before or three minutes after the show right. starts. We have so. a small but mighty staff of volunteers. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to read this to you. Yeah, so this is my sister's friend, Bennett. He wrote, I'm recovering from coronavirus. I would like to end my self-isolation, but don't want to put my family and others at risk. Government guidance is very inconsistent on when it's safe to end self-isolation. Anything from three days to two weeks after symptoms resolve. What does the data say? Oh. Uh. This is really hard. I'm, I'm talking to the CDC about this, even as we speak. The guy, you know, they're trying, they're walking a line between, they want to get people, especially first responders back. On the other hand, the data is tough to figure out exactly what to do. I think that, and go to cdc.gov, but the latest that I looked was, you, you need to be 72 hours without fever, without taking Advil or Tylenol. If you're taking right. those medicines, then, you know, without taking an NSAID or something. To, and people are talking about, about Tylenol or acetaminophen maybe being safer. I'm recommending that. Right. Um, advice, but I am telling my patients to do that. Um, just because the NSAIDs can give you ulcers and other problems anyway. So um, 72 hours without fever, at least that your symptoms are improving. 
and at least seven days since your symptoms began. Now, what you're referring to, what that very smart question is referring to is that there is data that if you actually look at, is there still virus in the, in the nasal passages? It could be much longer than that. And if you look at virus in the stool, it could be longer than that. So um, I, I think this is something you got to keep checking with the, with the um, Department of Health, with the CDC on. Uh, but I, what I'm doing is I'm telling people to play it safe. I'd rather have them stay out at 14 days from right. when they first got sick. We don't quite know. We're in that terrible, as a physician, you want to say, sure, you have a question? Here's the answer. And we're in that sort of clinical judgment phase. We want to follow the guidelines. You don't want to deviate from that. On the other hand, I'd if I follow the guidelines at least, and then in addition to that, put on another little buffer, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. But we're, you know, stay tuned, folks, for that that guidance. And we want to have that algorithm of, you know, how, how do you do things as a nation? You know, what's the advice? Okay, basically, just be super super cautious. Just over over. I do over because I, I got to tell you, this is a, this is there's going to be no place in America that's immune from getting this, and especially right now, we're the canary in the coal mine in New York City and the New York metropolitan area, the places on the East Coast getting hit hard. People out there who are watching. You know, in that New Yorker cartoon, the rest of the country, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. It's going there. Of course, it's on the West Coast, too. Washington was hit hard. L.A. is getting it now. But, you know, I think everybody should say, we're, we believe you. We believe it's happening. We also know there's no magical thinking. It's going to spread. Let's start doing all this advice, the social distancing, the washing your hands for 20 minutes, the sneezing into the crook of your arm or into a tissue. Do it now. And it's not business as usual. But what do we always say? Together, give you a beginning, a middle, middle and, and an end. there will be. I promise you, there will be bumpy road right now, but it's gonna, it's gonna end. Yours, by the way, we keep looking over at our dog who's so itchy. That's why she keeps biting her nails. And we're trying to avoid a a, 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 bit, a visit to the uh, to the vet. vet. Although we've been hearing, by the way, just on a total side note, Daily right. News printed an article. They're doing visits to a vet where it's kind of on the street, so you can drop off your vet and like keep safe distance and they'll look at the dog without you coming in contact. This is a side note. Yeah, I think we'll, we're gonna call our vet in the city and I think we wanna have them on the show yeah. to see how they're handling this because it's a big deal. And, and part of the article was people are really, people are home more than they have been before. So they're like looking at their animals with more fear. Like, and he then, sneezed right. and they're bringing the dog in. <laughs> I get it. And we're trying to, cause I know you wanna go back. We're trying, I'll give you the segue. We're trying to have fun home. Back to them. Oh, I just got it. Okay, thank you. And on that note, Dr. Toss. We're going to see you tomorrow. Well, we'll see you tonight with your dog. Right. Thank you, Dr. LaPook. We love you. Okay. And um, on this note. Should I go plug uh, it in? Well, hold on. So because we changed this around, we actually do not have the laptop plugged in. And when you see a little red like battery saying 18%, I think we may have to get the other computer, but you know what, Seth, you carry on. I can on. sort of do this. I know I can, we can sit like this. We're I gonna sit with a wire right between us. Okay. Yes, it's well, fine. It's, it's, it's sort of like we're Orthodox and there's like a sheet <laughs> or machitza. Anybody machitza? Get back to me. Okay, thank you. Um, where were we? Oh my goodness, okay, that's what next? we're doing um, right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring on Ms. Sydney Lucas. What's up? Wait, hey, what's up? Sydney. And Mr. Sydney Lucas. What? Michael <laughs> Cerberus. <laughs> that, what's up? Well, that's a surprise to everybody. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's daddy and daughter. So a couple um, of things. So Sydney, you were nominated for a Tony Award. How the hell old were you? I was 11. Wow. That was one of the most brilliant Tony performances I've literally ever seen. And Michael Cerberus. Me reading the paper? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> really, my finest Tony yeah. performance. Ever. Was that your? Did you win your second Tony Award for that, Michael Cerberus? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, where? First of all, where are you? Where are you in New Orleans right now? New York? Where are you? No, no, I'm uh, I'm by a uh, by the banks of the Susquehanna River in uh, eastern Pennsylvania, about two and a half hours northwest of New York. I left. Okay. I left on Wednesday. Do you have your Tony Awards with you? No, no, they're they're fighting the good fight at home. <laughs> Just wanted to know. So, Sydney Lucas, I love it. You are so. I got an email, 
I guess from your mom with like the most oh. amazing subjects that we could talk about. And like, I'm completely <laughs> obsessed with every single story. So it's like, tell me, okay. So first of all, talk about the traps on stage. Oh yeah. We had it. We had a couple, <laughs> we had a couple <laughs> problems with the traps. Um, like for example, one, do you know the song Raincoat of Love? Yes, I know the show very well, yes. Okay, okay. So like during Raincoat of Love, um, I'm standing on stage kind of like going like this and going like ba 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 whatever. And um, Joelle, Roberta, and Emily, they're all coming up on this middle trap. It's like a trap um, door, by the way. People don't know what a trap is. Yeah, sorry, trap, trap door is leads from the stage to like the basement and it takes things up and down. It's like an elevator, yeah. kind of. Um, Anyway, so all those people were coming up on the middle trap and like halfway through it just stopped, like completely stopped. And all you could see was like their heads and they were like still doing their dance moves. Um, and then we had to stop the show for like five minutes. And then, uh, yeah, and we started talking to the audience. We started singing songs. And then Lisa Dawn, the stage manager, like got on the God mic and was like, all right, you can, once they got the trap to, to, to work again, she was like, okay, continue. And we're like, Okay. Wait, stop and show you. Now you're reminding me, Michael, now I'm reminded of you. Can you tell everybody about when you did Tommy in Germany and like the stage hands? Well, <clears throat> there were a, a couple of disasters over the years in Tommy. There, there was, yeah, the stage hands in Germany who were wonderful, wonderful people, but they, they had, you know, Musical theater isn't done with the same regularity in Germany that it is certainly not in Offenbach, Germany, outside Frankfurt, as it is in New York. So to find crew, they would find people who, you know, applied for a job at the auto plant the day before, and then they applied for a job at the Tommy Theater, and then the next day they'd apply at the bread factory or whatever, and they just happened to get the job at at Tommy. So they weren't familiar with the way the way it worked necessarily. And there was one cross that uh, that the um, uh, one of the actresses had going from one side of the stage to the other, like had to tear off and like exit and run around the crossover in the back and come to the other side. And there was a stage hand in the way one night and she ran smack into him in the dark. And and the guy felt terrible and he said, I'm so, so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she said, yeah, you know, I, I, it's okay. I totally understand, um, but I have to make this cross really quickly. And he said, I totally understand. So the next night <laughs> she exits, she runs around, runs smack into him again because he didn't quite get that that was going to happen every night. Like that's sort of the way this goes. Oh, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't know what his show was. He didn't know. Show was. <laughs> no, he was like, you know, this was a nicer job than the auto factory. So, you know. Wait, I have to keep asking you, Michael, because now you're talking about trap door with the head. Please tell us, Sydney, about your, your, I remember all my stories. Because Michael and I do shows together. He's amazed me do shows. We tell them like, I feel like everywhere, like New Orleans, private time. Please tell her about when you first did Tommy, your amazing entrance. <laughs> well, this is my, my, my very first time on a Broadway stage it was the Gypsy Run for Tommy in the afternoon before our first preview that night. And so my first entrance, well, my first entrance, I kind of like would appear from behind the armoire and like be lifted up and land on top of it. My second entrance, I tumbled in somersaulting from the wings. And so I started and it was a really complicated thing. One crew member had to, this was like before there was electricity on Broadway. <laughs> so there, were, there was one crew guy handling the up and down motion for me. Another guy with ropes, another guy- With ropes? Yeah. Another guy handling the on stage, off stage, and then another person just carrying my weight and lifting me up in the air. So they all had to coordinate for me to like land at the right place on the stage on my feet at the right time. And it was really complicated. And they were, you know, I literally trusted my life to them and they were great. But the first time in front of any audience, one of the cables got hung up on a light. So I started my tumbling in and then just stopped and hung there in midair. And the band tried to keep playing for a while and had to eventually just stop. And so I'm just like hanging there like a sack of potatoes. And then very slowly, 
in their attempts to make it better, they just turned me around so that my butt was just facing the audience. So I'm like hanging there in midair in these white jeans, just with literally my ass hanging out for all of, that. <laughs> all of like my peers, all the gypsies, all of the, you know, all of the other, you know, chorus and, and, uh, company people of all the other shows. So that was my introduction to Broadway and it's it's only been downhill since then. <laughs> <laughs> and to Tony Awards. Okay, so by the way, Cindy Lucas, you ever watched Downton Abbey? I haven't watched it, but my parents went through this like watching, like a binge, but I, I love it. haven't Someone watched it. Someone just wrote, Cindy looks like a young Michelle Dockery and now I totally agree. Yeah. I, I have Thank to look you. that up. I don't know what that is. She's beautiful. So, Michael, I want you to sing this the lullaby that you sang in our show when we did in Provincetown. Was yeah. it cut from the show? Well, kind of. It was it it stayed in the show as just a little fragment that Bruce wow. sings to to Allison to get her to go to sleep before he sneaks out into the night in New York. And I always thought it was just sort of some old children's lullaby. And I asked Janine and Lisa, and they said, oh, no, we wrote it. It used to actually be a full song that Bruce sang, I think, towards the end of the show, I believe, like in an early incarnation of it, early workshop of it. Um, and I said, well, would you mind if, you know, would you just give the whole thing to me? And they did. And I just thought it sounded like this kind of country waltz lullaby thing. So my band, Loose Cattle, recorded it, and we did a, a video with all of the Fun Home kids that sadly Sydney was gone by the time we did it, so we didn't get to have her. But um, but so it's become a part of our, we recorded it and Allison did a sleeve for the 45 and stuff. So it's been it's been a part of my band's repertoire for a long time. Hmm. Okay, so I want you to perform it. So Sydney, do you want to be young Allison? Will you yeah. read your role? You want to go to sleep? Aww. Yeah, night guys. Sweet. Good night. <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is also with the this additional verse that Lisa wrote for us to to do. I've never heard this before, so have you never? No, I've never. Wait, is it weird to keep you on screen while he sings to you, or is it good? Michael, do you want her there for acting reasons, or it's bizarre? No, it's great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, should I be the guy that's waiting for you right after the lullaby? Oh my god, on the street. No. <laughs> that's part of it. He's literally leaving. Oh. I'm the young, hot Christopher Street. All right, bye. <laughs> I mean, that I always was imagining you. Like just, <laughs> just, you know, that's what I was always thinking. Hey. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Okay. There's a moon over the prairie shining so brightly. Moon o'er the prairie, so big and so bright. And I'd pray that old moon to shine straight through the dawn. This first light tomorrow, my love will be gone. Pony girl, ride, ride away. I know you'd break my heart. One day, some folks get the call to go. Some folks, they're bound to stay. Oh, oh, ride, ride away, ride. young girl dreamed you some mountains dreamed you a trail running straight to the sea but you're tired of my dreaming you're leaving for true the first light tomorrow now what can i do pony girl ride ride away I knew you'd break my heart someday. Some folks get the call to go. Some folks, 
they're bound to stay oh, right right away right 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 away right right away Right away. Now go to sleep. Yeah, I'm going to sleep now. Oh Daddy's got an appointment. Michael, that's so pretty. I wanted to, we're going to do ops and stuff later, but I just want to talk about your thing right now. So, your recording of that, people are going to actually buy and tell yeah. you what you're going to do for the Actress Fund. Yeah, all of the uh, all the sales from that and all of our loose cattle catalog that's at uh, Bandcamp. It's loose cattle at Bandcamp dot com. Um, uh, we'll give all of those proceeds to the Actors Fund. So there's you can download digital versions of all our records. You can uh, order the the hard copies of it. Although it'll take me a while to be able to send them to you again, but I will send them. Um, but all of that money will go to the Actors Fund, and especially the the Pony Girl. Uh, 45. It's a vinyl 45, like the, wow. you know, the old school. And um, uh, it's myself and Kimberly Kay, who's my co-band leader, uh, sings uh, St. James Infirmary, an old uh, New Orleans song on the other side. And the sleeve was designed by Alison Bechtel herself. So uh, yeah. It's just easier for me. I Googled it. It comes right up. If you just Google loose cattle, mm. you'll find the link. You'll find it. Yeah. Then remembering everything else. So listen, um, Michael, you, know, you made me cry. Oh. Oh, sweet daddy and daughter. Really didn't go to sleep. What? Why? Yeah. No, it never worked. She always, you know, as soon as I closed the door, she was up. I know. Yeah. I dog has to go outside, ignore James. So listen, I'm going to just bring on the cast for a second because we, Dr. LaPoo keeps saying how important it is to keep in touch with all of your loved ones. So I'm going to bring everyone so everyone can see each other. And we think it's very important to keep in touch with your loved ones. I'm going to go away for a second and you can keep. We just talk to each other. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Emily, you're muted. Lisa and Janine. Uh, there you go. Hey. Lisa and Janine are watching. I just texted you pictures of all of them watching. <gasps> no, is it? Is it? Could it be? <laughs> she's, she's, she's as mysterious as ever. <laughs> is it happening? Oh, this is like a <laughs> what a tease. I was in touch with Allison and she Wait. was supposed to be on and she texted she wrote at the beginning of the show that they're having a power outage in Vermont. You can't believe it, right? Uh, uh, wait. That's spooky. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Oh, wait, hold on. That's depressing. Like she was trying. That's depressing. <laughs> I keep FaceTiming with my parents, you guys, and my dad spends half the time doing stuff like this. <laughs> and like. <laughs> <laughs> Of course he does. Hi, Gary. Wait a minute. This is supposed to work. I know she has a damn power <laughs> outage. Hold on, I'm gonna try one more damn time. I, I hasn't hasn't she been through enough? <laughs> yeah, that's funny, my <laughs> Hey Sydney, didn't you have to leap over one of the open traps once? Better trap. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. That story. That one of yeah. the worst moments I've cool. ever experienced yeah. on the stage. Bar oh, your ninja like reflexes. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Beth, did you, I, I remember you telling me, I'll tell the story, but Beth, I don't remember, I remember you telling me, I remember looking back at you and you still in character, like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. not to see what happened. You were on the other <laughs> side. You were me at the piano. Hey, you ladies, ladies, yeah. we're going to talk at the same time because the volume doesn't work. <laughs> first. What, me? Oh, sure, you. Judy. Sydney, it was a scene. Sydney was going from one scene to the, a scene with me at the piano, and she was making the cross across the stage in the semi dark. Yeah, and the piece of scenery that's by the piano had gone down, and the trap was stuck, and it didn't close. And I looked. I was looking down, sewing, and I heard someone behind oh, me shout, and I looked up, and just as I looked up, Sydney went like this, and 
leapt over the hole in the stage. Okay, so I didn't purposefully leap over the trap. What, be, what happened was I was walking on, I had a notepad in my hand, I had a crayon in, in my other hand, and I was walking on and it was the dark, the lights hadn't come up yet. And I saw that like the spotlight was going insane in front of me. I was like, what is going right. like, This spotlight burst, his name is Chris, by the way, he saved my life. Um, <laughs> I was like, this spot guy, why is this spot guy has got to get his stuff together, man? I was like, what's going on? It's supposed to be on me. And last minute, last minute, because the spotlight was going crazy in front of me, I look up and I'm already full momentum stepping into a trap door that never closed. This had wow. never happened before. I don't know what happened. I, I think I just, I don't know. I just reached my leg out and just leaped and I grabbed onto the piano. And then Judy was like, are you okay? <laughs> I, she, Sydney just landed. She was looking at me like this. I was. And I, I just looked at her and said, like, you okay? She was like. She asked me like a bajillion times if I was okay. And I looked back at Michael and Beth who go off stage. Well, that's, and that's after, I mean, they, everybody had been so careful from the beginning because we knew what a dangerous set it was. And Sam was so good at like taking care of everybody. And, and I'd had that one thing in tech where, my foot, my leg went into the one little trap and, you know, it wasn't bad, but it was enough to remind us how dangerous it all was. So we had done everything we thought to make it safe and still, you know, there were moments, you know, really at edges was, was always like, you know, just oh. hope we survive it. But that, was Here, that was one fast thinking spot, follow spot. Up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Chris so in terms Dune. of keeping in touch with loved ones, Chris Doonrose. Chris My dad bought him a scotch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Talisker 25. I mean, that doesn't necessarily like make up for like saving my life, but um <laughs> <laughs> to start. Yeah, and the crew guy, the crew guys down in the basement. I heard them yell as I jumped over the trap, but they were like down there, like ready to catch me. Mm. And uh, he, and and then we, I was like shaking. I was like, "What's gonna happen?" And then the stage manager goes, "Carry on." <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> and then we. Just okay, so wait, wait, wait. So in terms of keeping in touch with loved ones, we have these. These are some people you may recognize. This is a shout out to all the people, um, all the healthcare workers on the front lines. And it's featuring some folks that I think you will recognize if I can only find it on my my uh, my amazingness. There it is. Go. It's this, I right? No, it's this. Okay. Here we go. Enjoy everybody from Fun Home. Thank you to our heroes, the defenders on the front line, the nurses and the doctors. We owe gratitude for your selflessness. Your empathy. Your sacrifice, we thank you. Oh, that's so nice. We have always had the best family. <laughs> oh I'm going to keep bringing the blank Do out. Do you guys remember the night? Oh, after yeah. Do you remember? After the Tony nominations, when we had all the traps were broken and yes. we had to restage the show yeah. in three yes. hours with no traps to keep, sh it was crazy. I, the thought, I, thought, I thought they were bringing us in early to like celebrate the fact that we won Best Musical. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh. And then they were like, so we have to really restage the show. What? <laughs> or the night that we did it totally acoustic with no, oh no God. power for the band. With water got in the soundboard. Yeah. You guys are so cute all together. So, okay, who can leave the story? Well, Beth, this is your first time on. Beth, will you leave the story about how you guys all went down south? I'm obsessed with that story, and I think it's so inspiring to everybody watching. Um, well, Michael should lead it because he made it happen. Um, it was the College of Charleston. It was the freshman class being assigned the graphic novel, Fun Home, and a bunch of uh, donors for that uh, college pulling their funding. And um, the, I don't know who who got in touch with us about it. How did we how did we learn about it? Well, it started it started uh, online. There was there was like a tweet about it from from people down in Charleston, and and um, I had seen it, and I think I retweeted it and said, you know, hey, anybody up for a road trip? Yeah. And 
and that kind of like sparked the discussion and then uh, and then Allison got involved and the uh, and the producers got involved I think the initially they wanted the college was hoping to get the rights to do a kind of staged reading of it and the producer said well how about if instead we bring the company down to do a kind of conversation with Allison and uh, and Lisa and Janine and all of us and it ended up being essentially uh, you know a a performance of most of the show and and Allison and back to back yeah two of them and for sold out audiences uh, and it was just it was an amazing amazing thing and I was thinking about that a lot because it's so frustrating right now I mean what what you guys are doing Seth is so extraordinary and and meaning so much to so many people but it's so frustrating that in this particular moment the thing that was so great that I learned about going down to Charleston and when we went down to Orlando too and did the show down there, um, you know, just brought the show down to perform uh, after after the horrific uh, events there. Um, it's just the, the, what a difference it makes to show up in person. You know, it's one thing and it's a great thing to send money and to, you know, send resources, but to be able to literally stand with people in their community and say, we are literally here with you and for you means so much. And that's the thing that we can't do right now. Yeah. Is, you yeah. know, st- you know, hold each other, be stand by each other. And, and so we're finding beautiful ways to do that in other ways. And we will have the time to do it Again, I know, but you know, oh, yeah. right now it's so it's so hard. But this is it, you know. And by the way, look, someone from South Carolina is listening. Mm-hmm. So, so Beth, if you would just give us a give us a, a version of just how you got this show because it is such. A, by the way, the fire literally looks like you have a video in back of you. <laughs> what? Um, crazy. Um, um, so I you know it's funny because I was looking through. I had a whole bunch of time on my hands recently, so that's why I've been I've been shooting pictures to my friends. I've been texting old pictures um, from you know 2015, and uh, I, I went back into my old photos and I found my actual audition for Fun Home because um, it was a video. You know, I, I sent in a, a actual. Vi- I'll send it to you guys. It's pretty funny. Oh yes, you have to. Yes, we must. I can't believe we haven't seen it ever. I, yeah. uh, I think I tried yeah. to do the dressing room. Maybe I played it because it was on my iPad. Anyway, um, I, I uh, had to do like Allison used to do these video blogs. Um, the Allison, the real Allison Bechtel, which we call T Rab. Yeah. Um, so the real Allison Bechtel did a video blog, and um, I think Lisa for the other. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello. Hello? <laughs> but how do I do it? Oh my gosh, wait. Hold on, this Connecting. is like the real deal. Connecting, hold on. Sorry, Beth. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I don't know if we can- Oh, there it is. <gasps> oh my gosh. Hold on, there we go. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, 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 <laughs> Hello. Where are you, Alison Bechtel? Seth Rudesky, I'm in my house in Vermont. We're having a power outage. I can't get online. We're ha- I'm in the dark. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> really Nothing sorry. stops her. Exactly. I can't hear. You are, it's so but wonderful to see everyone. hold on. It is so wonderful to see everyone, even we though she can't you. actually see everyone. I love you so much. So wow. I'll, I'll do this for Allison. So for, you know, we're doing these <laughs> auctions now, where if you go to starsinthehouse.com, people are just doing, like it began with Joanna Gleason donating the staff from Into the Woods, Ultra McDonald donating the baby from Ragtime. And look at Allison, just sent me that she's gonna put up. There's Allison, I'm gonna show you what she sent for, she's gonna auction this off. It's the original, take a look. <gasps> oh my gosh, oh. I love that. Wow. It's oh, Allison. Yeah. It's, it's, do, you for that? do you remember when you posed for that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it for a million dollars. 
<laughs> I, this is so great that it sort of works in a very, very big way. Wait, Allison, you look exactly like Beth Malone. It looks like two of the same people right there. <laughs> 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 and by the way, you know what? We'll we'll do another we'll do another reunion. People are so obsessed with the show. We'll just we'll bring you back, and we'll actually have an Oberlin reunion. You, me, and Judy, and we'll talk about Dascom. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, Allison, thank you for trying to make it work. We so appreciate it. Yeah. Bravo! It's amazing that you. Yeah. So um, Beth, I just wanted you to tell you a crazy ass. <laughs> Basically, I want Beth to tell the story about how she, she basically quit quit the business. Beth was out of the business, and she's like, the last thing I'm going to do is this musical about lesbians, this really sweet show. It was supposed to go to Broadway. The whole thing failed, and it was her last gasp stop on this rickety-rackety tour. And where the hell was that musical done? It was in Asbury Park um, in, in a in a carousel that got washed away with her. Oh, yeah, I remember that place. Yeah, remember that? So, it used to be a theater. There was a theater. Yeah. So she's doing this musical in Asbury Park, and she's like, this is the last time we'll ever perform again. I thought I was going to go to Broadway, but this is the last stop. Rickety Rackety Theater Outdoors, Asbury Park. And who's in the actual audience? Go. Opening night, uh, uh, it happened to be uh, Lisa Crone, happened to be vacationing in Asbury Park. And she and her sweetheart, and I think, who who else was it? It was... Uh, I can't remember who it was, but um, they were they were there <laughs> opening night. And then I got home. The show did its thing. It closed. I went back to L.A. I literally was putting together my CV so I could like teach college. And uh, my agent, who I never heard from, I have to say, <laughs> um, they told me, "I'm like, hey, do you want to put yourself on tape for this reading at the public?" And I was like, "Sure." And I got it. And um, I got I got the stuff in my inbox, and and I know Jeannie Tesori is listening right now. So she sent me a file that sounded like this, and it's Janine singing. Mm -hmm. Right angle of the leg, mm -hmm. the gathers in his sweater, or his glasses round. No, square across the top, bump bump bump, half moon, and me striped shirt match, watching Dad thought balloon. Daddy, comma, hey, daddy, come here. Okay. So that is the first thing I heard. And I was like, oh, what is it? What is it? It's so good. It's so hot. I can't not listen to it again. And I was like, I got to be in this, whatever it is. And um, that's how, uh, that's what happened. Like the, the first thing was like me doing an Alison Bechtel video blog monologue, pretty much to camera going, oh, this is me taking a picture of myself, drawing myself after I've posed for myself. Weird. I remember that. I remember when the show was like that. That ended up in the first, the very first reading that we did, Judy. Mm -hmm. um, that monologue was my audition. So it was just So I just love how you're like, I'm through with the business and Tony nomination. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I, so I, good, I, this is my new obnoxious thing I'm doing. Because I'm sort of fascinated with the brain and how shows are fully memorized. And I'm curious, like, when does a show finally leave your head? So I'm going to test you all on shows you've done in the past. And oh, we're going to see. Judy. I look at Michael. We're going to see. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the old ones. That the reason I was sort of going like this all the time when I was singing Just Around the River Bend is because all the words are taped up in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them anymore. I thought you were playing to the box seats. <laughs> Okay, so Michael Service, you're first. Okay. So I'll begin and you finish. <laughs> then again, we could be foolish not to quit while we're ahead. For? Uh, for, uh, <laughs> for what? Distance. Distance. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever sang that. Okay, so that was one. Sorry, sorry Andrew. Wow. You lasted a measure. That's right. Not even that. How about this speech? <laughs> Argentinos. Argentinos. Well, first of all, it was Argentinos. Oh, okay, <laughs> drop, drop <laughs> call, so do not <laughs> burn, Michael. Argentinos. Argentinos. We are all... 
<laughs> Listen, I had to learn a lot of Sondheim lyrics. I just didn't have room. I had to just start dumping things. But by the way, it began so confidently on pitch, Mason Vibrato, and then yeah. silence. My and then, yeah, that's kind of how it was in performance, too. He really, he really thought that you would know it because I just had to take four, four pages of music. You also, be able to you also that picked, like two of the most obscure moments in the whole thing yeah. for me. Um, Sydney. Yes. I heard someone crying. Who could it be? Maybe the house. Who no one seems to see. Wait, okay, so we're singing different things, but we're both right. Okay. <laughs> both sides. Okay. How's your last phrase? I heard someone crying. Resolve it. Maybe. Uh, Resolve it. Maybe it was. Oh, maybe it was she or he? Me! <laughs> oh, me. I'm so sorry. Oh, I feel so much better now that the youngest brat. Yeah. Well, and yeah, Sydney had to mind like a steel trap learning things, as I recall. So, I was so yeah. annoying. Michael, I remember like, oh, geez, in like rehearsals, if, if you like faltered for a second, like if you like paused yeah. for a second with the line, I'd be like, yes, this is your line. This one, no, it's, you know, it's this. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember that too. <laughs> oh, not okay. with love, with love. Like I can bend my fingers back. Like, like, <laughs> you guys catch yeah. up later. <laughs> Beth Malone, right. here's a part you played back in the day. So get out and stay out. <laughs> <laughs> you were the star of this damn show. Not in a million years. <laughs> I had enough. I'm what? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Complete silence. Watch Judy actually know more lyrics than anyone else. That's yeah, probably. She's gonna. Does he know I'm alive? Do I know if he's real? Does he? Wait, wait. Does he know what I feel? Does he know how I feel? Does he know what I feel? I know that one. <laughs> there are so many. I don't know where we are in the song. I'm no longer alone. <laughs> <laughs> now my love is a da 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 da. Find me, Okay, that was very good. Yeah, Judy, Judy. Oh, no. so oh, the love of my life is so near. Is that right? Yeah, okay, how about this? I'm gonna just mute everybody so we can really see what this sounds like. Here we go, here's the challenge, Judy Kuhn. Oh. Not a dream! What's you, you muted. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, you hold mu on, you I muted, muted you. You muted Judy. Oh, that was passive aggressive. <laughs> Not a dream! Yes! <laughs> yeah, Judy! <laughs> you still got it! <laughs> okay, Beth's loving it. Oh All right, Beth, you're our final performance. Oh. Emily, I know you're on vocal rest. Beth, you were just doing Unsinkable Molly Brown. You were brilliant. Your show closed before you thought it was going to close because of everything that's going I on. I think that may have been the last time we saw Beth and Judy. Oh my God! Beth, we were the opening night with Judy. So, so Beth. This is so okay, cute. this is a story. I got I got to be able to see Beth better. I got to put on my glasses. So, we were we were there on opening night. That was this guy. It was just like what a month ago. But it was the winter, and he's wearing a sweater. And I was wearing the coat, and oh, I was and, I, and I wanted to be there for Beth, but I needed to go get a little bit of air. So I was going to the lobby. Seth and I were in the very back, so I knew it wouldn't disturb anyone, right? So I go to the lobby. I just needed to get some air before Beth's next big number. And I literally run in to Beth Malone in costume, about to make an entrance. She looks at me as if she were in the audience. James gives me a big hug. And I, started, and I, thought, and I thought I'd been like caught by the principal, like sneaking out, but I wasn't. And, and I just said, I'm sorry, I'm just hot. It and she, hot. Knew, she it knew. It was really hot. And then I went to the house manager and I'm like, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaving. 
<laughs> and nobody was it's crazy. She went from chatting with James to literally immediately on stage during an 11 o'clock number with no transition. But Beth was like, get the fucking air on. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job vicious. This is, and guess what? So today we adopted a dog named Molly Brown. Oh! Yay! Oh! Oh. Terrible has a sister now. We've been Where is she? Out, but we can do, Shelly's got her in the bedroom. Um, Evie. But Shelly, bring her out. I'll show, I'll have Shelly bring her out. Wait, we're gonna, we bring all the dogs out. Like so. <laughs> yeah, they have the show, we bring out the dogs. Yeah. All right, so no. Beth, give us a taste of the show that many people didn't get to see because it closed before it was supposed to close. Oh, uh, a taste of it? Oh, you want me to do it? Yes! <laughs> uh, <laughs> here comes Molly Brown now. Look. Aww. Her baby child. Oh, and her name was Molly at the shelter, and we got her, and her name is still Molly. Hi, meow. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm getting up my um, thing. Terrible dog. He's bud, up. bud. Come here, bud, bud. Uh, Lisa hey, bud, bud. was texting me that she loved that story, and it was Lee Silverman that was with her. It was Lee Silverman that was with her the night. Um that she came to see. Of Asbury Park, yes. Yes. All right, Um, it's gonna take, I don't know. You're so amazing in this show, man. Thank you. Thank you, it's a drag. I should be doing it right now. I should be on stage as we speak. Wow, yeah, well you're doing, well you are on stage in front of a lot more people. <laughs> Cause you got a small theater, this is real wide, man. Okay, ready? I ain't yeah, down sure. yet. Sure, I'm tougher than I'm not giving up. I won't do it. I'm not even gonna say that I'm down. Look, I'm thinking. I'm thinking very hard how to break through. Maybe here, maybe there, maybe no place. But there come a time where nothing or nobody wants me down like I wants me up. Up where the people are, up where the talking is, up where the joke's going on. Now look to here, I am important to me. Whoops. I am important to me. Ain't no bottom to no pile. I mean much more to me than I mean anybody I ever did. Certainly more than I mean many, so I want to get it. Go ahead, break my arm. You say, Uncle? Ha! Don't make a bit of difference. You keep saying I'm down to lie. Say so too, I said. Ever try stepping on, piss out? There's one now. Jump, stomp, thinking you got him, thinking he quit. He don't think so. There he goes. And you can be positive. Sure, I'm as good as any piss out that ever lived. Oh, I hate that word down. But I love that word up. Because up means hope, and that's just what I got. Hope. For someplace better, someplace, I don't know, cleaner, shinier. Hell, if I gotta eat catfish heads all my life, can I have them off a plate just once? And a red silk dress. When there's girl enough on me to wear one. And then someday with all my might and all my mind, I'm gonna learn to read and write. I'm gonna see what there is to see. So if you go from nowhere on the road to somewhere and you meet anyone, you'll know it's me. I'm gonna move from to find a house with a golden fair. And if that house is red and has a big brass bed, I'm moving there. It's a lot of hot belting in my <laughs> This is Joey Chancy. He sent me this track. Oh, shit. It's not Joey. There he is. That's Joey. He was our, um, it's not live. <laughs> Show. Oh wait, that you know, a full step. You gotta show, you know, you know. So I'm gonna learn to read and write. I'm gonna see what there is to see. So if you go from nowhere on the road to somewhere and you meet anyone, you'll know it's me. I'm gonna move from place to place. To find a house with a golden stair And if that house is real And has a big grass bed I'm moving there My name is Yay! Yay!
We're in Snowmass, Colorado right now. And oh, yeah. they, they were supposed to come see it. They came over and I sang it over the balcony for them. Oh, <laughs> oh brilliant. Our big more donations. Hey, Beth, in honor of uh, all of you, actually, here's some more donations and before we all say goodnight. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a thanks for giving to the Actors Fund tonight. Kathy from West Virginia, $25. Yay. Margaret from Florida, $103. Look at that. Fang from Maine, $25. Hey, Fang. Yeah. Rosemary from Michigan, $25. Jared from Ohio, $51. Chris and Tammy from Iowa. Iowa. I want the Midwest. $103. I love that. $103. Kelly from Florida, $44. And Robin from New York, $25. And listen to this. Well, by the way, this Beth Malone, this must be a friend of yours because from your home state. Liz from oh. Colorado just donated $1,000. Hey, Liz. Hey. Go, Judy, go. No, I, I wanted to, did you want me to talk about the donation? Oh, right. Yes. So here's oh. the deal. So we have the auction. We have Michael Service. Go to Loose Cattle, Google it. And if you buy anything from Loose Cattle, it's going to uh, the Actors Fund. We have, wait, what else? Wait, who, it's, saying, it's Judy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I forgot the, the Alison Bechtel. We have the Alison Bechtel. I knew there was yeah. Yes. There is that amazing print. Look at that. It's the three owls. Well, it's the four Allisons. Right. It's an original sketch and it's like on the actual tracing paper and she's going to mount it and everything. And everything's going to be delivered after the crazy virus. But you go to starsinthehouse.com for it. Judy Kuhn, I'm so excited. Talk about what's yeah. on the riverbank. I have this leather jacket that Disney gave me. It's a Pocahontas jacket. It says feature animation crew on the back. Wow. And Pocahontas here. It's leather. It's sort of big on me. <laughs> Donate it. Um, That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. Uh, you guys have been amazing. So many wonderful comments. Thank you so much. You guys have always been so giving. The Orlando, the everything. So um, get the Fun Home album if you don't have it, people, and get the get the actual graphic novel. And we yeah. got to announce stars this week. Yeah, right? so tomorrow matinee, we have Charles Bush, Julie Halston, and Ian Armitage, John and, Sheldon. Oh, wow. Judy Q and a special classical pianist, Jeffrey Beagle. We're having a little Oberlin action. So oh, he's not from Oberlin. And then tomorrow night is our first TV reunion. And uh, Mary Lou Henner has grabbed the entire cast herself, Tony Danza, Christopher Lloyd, Danny DeVito, Carol oh, Kane, who did I miss? And Judd Hirsch. 18 oh. hours, we're all going to be here tomorrow night. The cast of Taxi. So keep tuning in. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. Oh, and we got to say, well, I got to do one person. Dr. John LaPook, I'm going to get rid of myself. So it's Dr. John LaPook can say goodbye. Hold on. Yes. Let me get rid of myself. How do I do that? I think I do that. We have so many people. It's so hard to control this sometimes. Wait till tomorrow. Oh, he's gone. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.